today we're going to be talking about encouraging one another. This is an important message. Probably the most important message I uh, will share this year is this message. And I want you to hear it. Um, and so if you have your Bibles, we're going to be looking at two verses uh, or two passages, should I say, excuse me. We're going to be looking at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 through 10. And then uh, we're also going to look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and 11 and a host of other verses uh, to come. But let's see what it says. Uh, look with me. First uh, Peter chapter 2, verse 9 through 10 says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. But you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Amen. I love this passage of scripture. And then look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, very short verse. It just simply says, encourage one another and build one another up. We live in a season of history where this is a priority for the saint of God. We need to be men and women who encourage one another. Let's pray, shall we? Father, we thank you for your word. Father, we thank you for your presence that we have already sensed in this place. Lord, you have warmed our hearts. You have touched us in a special way already. And Father, I pray that you would anoint your word. Lord, anoint your service to deliver what you've laid on my heart. And Father, I pray that it will minister to, to the, the congregation in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You know, there have been many studies over the last 40 years that say that the way you see yourself determines to a large degree on how you act and react in life. Your self-perception, your, your self-esteem, your self-worth is a governing factor in how you live your life. If you see yourself as a loser, to a large degree, you're going to act like a loser. If you see yourself as not being very creative, well, you're going to kind of sit in the back of the room and not offer any creative ideas or not be creative because you don't see yourself as being creative. If you see yourself as a victim, you're going to allow people to victimize you. That's how you see yourself. You'll never rise any higher than the way you see yourself. On the other hand, if you see yourself as being successful, you're going to perpetuate that success because you see yourself being successful. And it has, you have seen success in your past, and you'll have confidence. You'll never rise any higher than the way you see yourself. Now, this isn't a new idea. Thousands of of years ago, the Bible declared this. It says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You know, we live in a very discouraging time. We live in a very polarized season of history where people are discouraged. People do struggle. So what does God say about you? I think that's important. What does God say? Well, today I want you to, to see what God says about you and what we're to do and how we're to help others. You see, the truth will set you free. Now, Peter is writing to discouraged believers. They're taking some heavy hits on their self-esteem because, think about it, they're being fed to the lions. They're being run out of town in the Roman Empire. They're being persecuted. They're having a pretty tough time as believers. 
And so Peter is writing this epistle to these discouraged believers who are facing terrible times and certainly a polarizing season of history as well. They're discouraged. In the first chapter of 1 Peter, God tells us what he's done for us. But in this second chapter that we're looking at, uh, this is what God says about you. I want you to catch these five or six different titles, these characteristics, these analogies. Number one, he says, you are a chosen people. Say chosen. chosen. Man, we, we love to be chosen. I, I tell you what, even to this day, I, we used to, I loved to play football. I loved to play baseball. I loved any kind of sports. If it was a sport, I was, man, I was all about it. And we, on, we had a big group of kids in our neighborhood and up the street, and we would ride our bikes with our ball gloves, and we would go to the park, and we would meet there. This wouldn't be some organized thing. It was, it was certainly an unorganized. The gates were locked, and as kids, we would climb over the gates. We weren't supposed to be there. No trespassing. But we'd get out there on that ball field. And we would begin to pick teams. We'd get two captains, and, and the two captains would begin to choose different people. And there's something about being true. I want Nate on my team. Listen, that's what God is saying about you. He wants you. He has a plan for you. You are a chosen people. You belong to God. You are living stones. You're a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. Once you had not received mercy, but think about it now, you have received mercy and grace. This is who you are. What an encouraging word. In, in this epistle where, where Peter is having to deal with all these discouraging things here is a diamond in the rough that just as it's like the light hits the diamond and it just just radiates in many different directions of who you are this is who you are what an encouraging word dr james dobson did a study of 10,000 women and he discovered the number one problem in these 10,000 women, low self-esteem. It's the number one problem that these women that he was doing research on were experiencing. So this morning, I want you to be encouraged. This is an encouraging message because there's so much negativity in our world today. I can't even open my social media without being alarmed or discouraged. I, I can't read a news app without seeing all the news and the negative, the hateful comments that, that are on there. And certainly we live in such a season where people are so critical, they're so hateful in their responses and their comments. Hello, anybody living in the same world I am? And so it's time for the believer to step up and lift others up. Bring a word of hope in our world. To bring a word of encouragement in our world. You know, I don't need any friends like Job had. <laughs> Remember the story of Job? I don't want to wear this story out, but it's, it, it's a true story. And Job was a godly man. He was a righteous man. That's what God said about Joseph. Satan comes before God, and, and they're talking, and, and God says, have you considered my servant Job? And, and Satan said, look, he's going to fail you. He's going to turn his back on you. You have blessed him. You take away the blessing and watch what he does. God said, no, he's going to be faithful Amen. to me. Satan said, no, he's not. God said, yes, he is. Satan said, no, he's not. God said, yes, he is. <laughs> Satan said, well, I'll take you up on that. And you know the story that God allowed Satan to take everything that was dear 
to Job. All of his wealth, all of his loved ones, except his wife, everything. Even Job wound up with sores. And God said, Satan, you cannot take his life. But listen to me, he will not forsake me. And everything was taken. And here he is in the middle of misery, discouraged. We can see from some of his comments. It's not a sin to be discouraged, but we're going to talk about how to be encouraged and how to encourage one another. It's important. This is an important message. And some of you may be here today and you may be discouraged. You may be discouraged at the economy. You may be discouraged at politics. You may be discouraged about this coronavirus. You may be discouraged about any number of things. But I want you to be encouraged today. Job was in the middle of, of, of this sickness on his life, these sores all over him. He's lost everything. In fact, his wife came up and said, Job, come on, why don't you just curse God and die? And sometimes we give Job's wife a hard time. But listen, she lost everything too. She went through the same sorrow and grief and heartache that Job went through. And then came along the three amigos. <laughs> now, this is what I'm talking about. We don't want any friends like these three amigos. But out of this conversation with these three guys, we learn a principle. We learn something that's so powerful to help us through the struggles in life. We're going to get to it. But, but they are saying, Job, it's your fault. It's sin in your life. It's because of something you've done. It's because of something you did to, to cause this to happen. And I love what Job says in, in, in chapter 16, uh, verse 2, verse 2 and 3, but verse 4 and 5 is what we're going to concentrate on. But verse 2 says, I've heard all this before. I mean, they, they have given him a lecture after lecture. And he's, I've heard all this before. What miserable comforters you are. And I love this next verse. I, I wish I could say this, but I can't. I'm too pastoral. I, you know, I, I, a pastor can't really say these things. But maybe you can. Maybe you would like to say this to someone who's not been encouraging to you. And here's what Job says. Won't you ever stop blowing hot air? <laughs> what makes you keep talking? Oh, my goodness. Have you ever wanted to tell someone? What, what do, you just... You won't let me speak. It's just like a monologue. This is supposed to be a conversation. Won't you stop talking and let me say something? I probably shouldn't confess this. Several years ago, someone called me, and they were giving it to me, boy, right and left. Boom, 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 boom. And I said, let me say something. Let me respond to that. And they just talked over me. And just boom, boom, boom. I said, hey, will you just stop talking for a second? And when I said that, they hung up on me. <laughs> I got an earful, but I didn't even get to defend myself. And here's where Job is. Look at verse 4. Job said, you know, I could say the same things if you were in my place, if you were in my shoes, if you were where I was. I could say the same thing. I could spout off criticism and shake my head at you. Mm. But if it were me, somebody say, if it were me. Come on, you can say it better than that. If it were me, I would encourage you. If it were me and I were in your shoes, I would speak life to you. I would encourage you. I would try to take away your grief. Some people think they're so smart because they can point out every little fault in your life and they can itemize it, they can list it, they can just tell you every place you're going wrong and they think they're so smart. Listen, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to do that. 
It takes someone special to be able to list encouraging statements towards someone. Stop the naysaying. I know I'm not speaking to this church. (laughs) Let's be encouragers. Isn't there enough dismal news outside these doors? And we have the reason to celebrate. There's a famine in the land for a voice of encouragement. Let's be a voice of encouragement. How many want to be a voice of encouragement in our world? Amen, amen. I see those. We need to be a voice of encouragement. A word can build up or a word can crush. Look what the Bible says, Proverbs 18, 21. It says, the tongue has the power of life and death. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Your tongue, your words can speak living, just living waters into people that are thirsty. Or you can cause that plant to wilt. It's the power of the tongue. If that little video that you heard, we, we, we don't have a ton of things in common with God, but one of the things that we have in common with God is that we can speak. God spoke everything into being. He spoke the world into being. He, he spoke the, the mountains and the stars. In fact, you know, we learned the other day in, in, in Psalms that God put every star in its place and gave each one a name. I don't know if our scientists even know how many stars there are out there, but God does. We don't know the number of hairs on our head, but God does. There's nothing that escapes the eye of God. And if it were up to me, Job said, I would encourage you. I think this is what the author of Hebrews is trying to get through. Hebrews 3.13 is such a powerful, important verse. Uh, Notice what it says. Encourage one another. Encourage one another. When you feel like it. Encourage one another when the Spirit prompts you. Encourage one another Every once in a while, what does the Bible say? Encourage one another. What's the next word? Daily. Daily. Ooh. Wow. Encourage one another. I'm telling you what, this will revolutionize your life, your, your business, your marriage, your relationships, Everyone you come in contact with, if you would encourage one another daily. We don't have a problem being critical. Man, there's nothing in the Bible that says, you know, be critical to one another daily. Forgive me for being facetious. It just comes natural, doesn't it? And we hear it, and we hear it, and we hear it. Why? Should we encourage one another daily? Well, encourage one another daily as long as it is called today. Again, uh, reemphasizing daily while it's still called today. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Encourage one another so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Or King James says, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Listen, sin will deceive you. It will trick you. Sin lies. Sin distracts. Sin destroys. Sin tears down. It will try to justify wrong behavior. Well, you know, I know it's wrong, but you really deserve this. And and you will justify it. And yet it will be wrong. But we need to be encouraged. I don't know about you, but I face discouragement every single day. I, you know, there there are times when I think, boy, I just don't know if I'm going to measure up. 
I don't know if I'm going to meet my goals. I, I don't know why I'm here, why I'm there, why, why God's called me to this, why God's called me. And I can become very discouraged. The Bible says encourage one another daily so that you are not deceived by sin. And so I want to talk about every one of us being encouragers. Well, Pastor, that's just not my gift. I, I don't have the gift of encouragement. I, I just don't know how to encourage people. I, you know what I say to people like that? Yeah. You, when you were little, you couldn't walk very good as an infant. I, I got to show you what it's like. Yeah, some of you are like young Frankenstein. You're like, Trying to learn to walk. Yeah, it may not be easy for you to be an encourager, but God is saying to you, every single person in this auditorium and watching online, that we need to be encouragers. Hello? Amen. Thank you. Amen. Good preaching, Pastor Nate. <laughs> that one of the most valuable tools that we can learn to be encouragers to one another. Well, Pastor, help me. How, how can I? Let me give you a simple rule that you can follow to be an encourager. If you think something good, say it. If you think something good, say it. The moment you think anything positive about someone, send them a text. Call them. Use that mobile device that you've paid so much money for. Send a tweet. Bless them in some way. Encourage them. Some of you that don't have smartphones, write a letter, write a note, put it in the snail mail. It will get, it will encourage. Have you, isn't it great to get a, a card or a note that, and someone is saying how much they appreciate you. Last week, Pam and I could hardly stand it when we read all the cards of, of your gracious, kind words to, to Pam and myself. We, we, our first thought was, you know, we, we don't deserve that. We're not that good. Uh, some of you lied. That's what the problem. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm teasing. I want to just say, uh, and I know Pam would say the same how grateful we are. The point I'm trying to make is encourage someone. Say it. Show it. Express it. Why in the world would you ever rob someone of a blessing that goes unexpressed? Hello? Share it. Tell it. Bless someone. Uh, one of the best things to, to do in relationship, whether you're married whether you're in a business, whether in any relationship, is to set that blessing free into the life of those individuals. It, it's life-changing. And, and, and some of you that are married or someday want to get married, let, let me just tell you, listen, when you speak blessings and encouragement into that person's life, it is life-changing. It is. There's something about that. You know, researchers tell us, now this is important, this is, and I use this, and if you've been in any type of marriage counseling with me, I share this with every couple. It takes 10 positives to overcome one negative. It takes 10 positive comments, encouragements in your life to overcome one single negative. I don't know about you, but people can say, wow, you played that piano great, and I just love the little frills, or whatever it may be. And one person can, can say one thing, and I'm consumed by it. Are, are anybody like me? Amen. Anybody live in the real world? 
It's the truth. You, you hear a negative comment, it will take 10 positive comments for you to overcome that. Uh, there was a businessman who went away on a trip, as he often did, and he decided to sneak in a lecture uh, on, on how to, to be a better husband. And so he sat there, and, and the lecturer, the clinician, said to him, you know, or, or to the group, you know, you need to take some flowers to your wife and pick out a, just not any card, but the right card, and, and go home and present these flowers and card to her, and then say some of those nice somethings in her life. And so the businessman thought, you know, I, I really have never done that. I think that's a great idea. And so he gets close to home. He goes into Publix. He gets some beautiful roses. And then, and then he comes out. He also gets a, a card. And not only that, he goes over the top. He buys some chocolates, her favorite chocolates. And he, he goes home, and he comes in the door, and he sees his wife. She looks a little taggered like she's had her up day, but he stops and says, honey, I, I want to let you know these roses are for you. This card is how my heart feels about you. And these chocolates, I know these are your favorite chocolates. And I want you to know if it weren't for you, I wouldn't be able to live. If it weren't for you, I, I wouldn't have breath in my body. I just want you to know I love you. And she collapsed on the floor. <laughs> And she began to sob, and she began to cry, and she, and so he knelt down beside her and, and, and said, honey, what, what's wrong? Did I say something wrong? Well, you know, it's been a terrible day. The washer machine overran, and water went everywhere, and the dog got mud all over the closets, and the kids took the crayons and marked all over the walls. And I found out my mother's coming for the weekend. I just found out, and now you come home drunk. encouraging words they'll get a reaction may not always be what we think hello paul said this in ephesians he said don't let any unwholesome talk don't let any underline that in your body don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths but only what is helpful for building others up. I mean, think about how different your relationships, where, whatever they may be, how different they would be if you were a person that was an encourager. You know, I, I've got three children, and... I've tried to practice this. I know that sometimes you have to speak discipline, but I would rather my children hear a hundred positive things about how special they are, how gifted they are, about the plan that God has for them. I want to speak life into their lives. I'd rather a hundred times I share positive things about them I know sometimes parents have to be critical. You know, don't run toward the street. Hello? And some of those things are important, but here's what I'm trying to say, especially when we know researchers, marriage counselors, have already said that it takes 10 positives for every one negative. We should be, and especially the people of God. We should be the most encouraging people on the planet. And I wonder if we are. I wonder if we've gotten too much of the world in us, but we're just so critical. And, and, and for some reason, when we're critical, sometimes it makes us feel or, or makes people feel that they're, you know, they're, 
an expert at that particular thing or if it sets them higher than someone else, well, we should put that away. We should be all about encouraging one another. Let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouth except that for building each other up. Job said, if it were up to me, if it were up to me, I would encourage you. That, I don't know. That is just haunting me. This, this whole week, it's just, if it were up to me, I would encourage you. Boy, what, what a statement from someone who is going through a tough time. We need to be encouraging. You know what happens is, especially uh, when, when I'm ar around people or counseling people, uh, sometimes I hear from, from women who say, you know, my husband is just not a leader, a spiritual leader in my home. He's not being the priest of the family. He's not being this. He's not being that. And sometimes they'll say it in front of their husband, in front of me. Like that is going to encourage them to suddenly become the priest of the home. No. It doesn't work that way, especially with guys. Let me just tell you about men. And, and, and we hear this all the time. And we make jokes about it. Boy, men have big egos. And we joke about it. Well, there's a little bit of truth in that. I mean, it starts when they're a little boy. And, and they do something as a little boy. They, they run to first base instead of running to third base after they hit the ball. They run the right way. And you're like, whoa, Johnny, that is awesome. You know what Johnny does? He runs back to home plate to run again to first base. <laughs> so he can hear that what? Woo! Or they learn to play the guitar. Or they learn to play piano. Or they learn something, and you give them a positive reinforcement. What do they do, especially men? God wired us this way. I don't know why. But it just energizes. If your husband isn't being the spiritual leader, any time he does anything that remotely resembles spiritual leadership you need to say man it just touches me when you say that or when you do that you have to speak speak words of positive reinforcement and it will come around they'll come around eventually oh, well pastor you don't know my husband <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, don't raise your hands. No elbowing. I'm telling you, it works. Start off simple, but you share an encouraging word. Slowly, they'll start, you know, if they say something like, you know, let's go to church or let's watch church online. And you go, boy, that just touches me. When, when you say that, it just inside it touch you're going to be watching church online every week i'm just telling you i know men be faithful to do that watch there's something about being encouraging job said if it were up to me i would be encouraging if you think about something say it we're people of the light we need to lift one another up amen there's a story. Sometimes we need to be lifted up. Sometimes there is nobody around to encourage you. And, and let me give you an example in the Bible of what to do. Sometimes you need to encourage yourself. First Samuel chapter 30 is one of my favorite stories in the Bible for this very reason. Uh, let me give you a little background, and we're going to read, read verse 6 of chapter 30 of 1 Samuel. Listen to this. David is, has been part of a group, or he's leading a group to protect God's people in the land of Israel. And so he and his, his mighty warriors ride their horses around. They're, they're looking to make sure there's safety in the land. And so they've been out on a patrol. They've been doing their job, and they, they see in the distance as they're heading home smoke 
coming up where their camp was. Think about that. They've been out in the hot sun. They're sweaty, but suddenly a cold chill comes across the spine of their back. They come up over the hill, and as they look, they see their entire encampment destroyed and fire and, and, and ripped apart. And so they, they race to where their encampment is because this is where their family, their children, everybody that is dear to them is, is, was in this camp. And they get there, and there's no one there. The Midianites as often they have done to other groups, take captives so that they can be slaves in their camp. And they're there at their encampment. The smoldering smoke is coming up. The the fear, the anxiety, the the anger suddenly swells up in in, in these men, and they say, David, it's your fault. They say, we're going to take your life. You're going to pay for it. And this is where we are when we read this passage of Scripture, look at verse 6 of, of 1 Samuel uh, chapter 30. It says, David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. David, you got us into this mess. They were going to stone him because they were bitter in spirit because of their sons and daughters. But catch this phrase. There was no one there to encourage David. David, it's okay. You're a good leader. We're behind you. No, they're going to stone him. David found strength in the Lord his God. Now, this word uh, strength, they're found strength in the Hebrew is shazak. Say shazak. You You can tweet someone. I just learned Hebrew today. Shazak, it means to... Talk to yourself. Build yourself up. That's why in the King James it says this, but David encouraged. There's that word. There's the word we're talking about today. But David encouraged himself in the Lord is God. There are times when people are are not going to encourage you. You won't find an encourager around And sometimes you need to get alone with the Lord and encourage yourself. You need to start uh, getting alone with God. Notice the next verse. Verse 8. David encouraged himself. David encouraged himself. But before he encouraged himself, and we're going to see what happens, David began to recognize that God is a faithful God. God is a protecting God. God is a God that will provide for my every need. I can look to him. I can can call upon him when it seemed hopeless, when it seemed everything around him was just discouragement. He encouraged himself in the Lord. He got his Shazak back. Sometimes you need to get your strength. Verse 8, then David asked the Lord, should I chase after this band of raiders? Will I catch them? And the Lord told him, yes, go after them. You will surely recover everything that was taken from you. When did he get a word of victory? After he encouraged himself in the Lord. Listen, we know that the positive words are difficult to remember. And we know that negative words are so difficult to forget. And there are times when we just have to encourage ourselves. We need to say, you know, no weapon formed against me will prosper. I am the righteousness of God through Christ. The Lord will provide for me. No good will he withhold from those that love him. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for he is with me. I'm not the tail. I'm the head. I'm the anointed of God. God has good things for me. He has a good work for me, which he has prepared in advance for those that love him. 
You need to start saying things like that. And before, look, you don't need a pill. You don't need an aspirin or an Advil. You just get along with God and you start reciting those things in God's word. And suddenly there's something that happens inside of you. Woo! That's better than any pill, any, any type of anxiety. It is the power of the living word of God. That will encourage you. And David recognized this, and he encouraged himself in the Lord. There are three different passages. I'm going to close with this. And um, Hernan, if you want to come to the piano. You know, you've heard me say this, and there's a phrase David used to say, or, or three specific times, the exact phrase, why so downcast, oh my soul? Why are you discouraged? Why are you depressed? Look at what Psalm 43. This is kind of the New Living Translation. This is why so downcast, oh, my soul. But the New Living Translation says, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. He's not putting his hope and his trust in David. You know, he's not saying, David, you can, you can get this. You can get through this. You know, you, you can make it happen. No, he recognized only God can make it happen. And he encouraged himself in the Lord. There are a number of places where we, we find that. Why so downcast? Oh, my soul, put your hope in the Lord. Why are you depressed? Why are you down when you know the faithfulness and goodness and power and the provision of God? Why would you be down? Are we listening to the voice of the enemy that's trying to discourage us? Put your hope in God. Get your shazat back. See, my God is my provider, my protector. My good. He's all powerful. He is ever present. He shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. I want you to know for the last 15 years, it seems, I was telling Pam this, it seems like we have never had enough money to make it another month. I'm just being honest. But God has provided for 15 years. We don't have any debt. We're trying to buy a a church if they'll get their act together. We're doing the best we can, but they're chasing money. And sometimes these, these developers can just throw crazy money at these. We've already had it with the Korean church. It just happens. But God has put us in a position where we've made a decent offer. And that church needs to make a decision. Are we going to keep this a church? Are we going to keep this property for the glory of God? Or are we going to sell Slurpees? That may sound mean, but that really is the decision. I can't believe a church. Now, we've made a decent offer. I'm not even talking about us. But that a church would sell their property for money. And we're offering good money. But they'd rather sell Slurpees. They'd rather make it a car wash. I'm telling you, the church of Jesus Christ in our world today need to arise and get our priorities right. God has always provided for us. Why so downcast? Job said, if it were up to me, I would be your, the biggest voice of encouragement you've ever seen this side of heaven. Amen. We need to be men and women of encouragement. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. You're an awesome God. You've always provided for us. You've always made a way. Lord, even at times when, when I have worried, exhibited anxiety. You calmed my fears. You met every need. Father, you're so true to your word. You are
faithful. Lord, help us not to walk in discouragement, not to walk in anxiety, not to be downcast. But help us to recognize you're bigger than any problem or circumstance that we confront. You really are. Lord, I pray that you would just encourage your people today. I pray it in your precious name. With every head bowed and every eye closed, you're here today and you say, Pastor, I, I really needed this word. I I have been, in recent weeks, months, been fighting discouragement, depression, anxiety, stress, worry. The list could go on. And we're not going to embarrass anyone. But I'm going to, with no one looking around, I'm going to ask if, if that's you and you just be honest, God sees. If you'd be honest and raise your hand and say, that's me. I want you to lift your hand right now. God sees the Holy Spirit. See those hands. Thank you. Thank you. Many, many hands. We have an opportunity to speak words of encouragement to our family. In fact, when you start being really encouraging, when you start trying to do Speak 10 words of encouragement in someone's life a day. That was your goal. They're going to think something's wrong with you. That's okay, Lord. Help us to make a difference, to bring about change in our relationships because we are encouragers. We're speaking words of life. We're speaking words that, that lift people up, especially in our world today. Father, help us. Lord, you saw every hand that was lifted. I pray right now for each and every one in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that you would encourage them. Lord, remind them that they are a chosen people. They're a royal priesthood. They are the people of God. They belong to you, Lord. And you have all the resources in the universe. Lord, help us to dare to trust you. In Jesus' name. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I want to ask one final question. You're here today, and maybe you've never given your heart to the Lord. If that's you, would you raise your hand? We, the Lord loves you. We want to pray for you. Again, we're not going to embarrass anyone, but is, is there anyone? Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand with me this morning. Hallelujah. I just want to pray a prayer blessing over you in closing. I would ask you to hold hands, but if, if it's a family member, if you want to hold hands or go ahead. I know we're in trying to keep safe distancing. But I want us to pray right now for one another. Father, I pray that we would encourage one another. And so, Father, right now, we pray for that person on our right. We pray for that person on our left. Father, we pray a prayer of encouragement. Lord, bless them, oh God. Let the windows of heaven open wide and pour out a blessing into their lives, oh Father. Lord, that they would experience healing. Lord, that they would experience provision. Lord, that they would experience protection. Lord, that they would experience, Lord, the very favor of God upon their lives. That, Lord, wherever they go, wherever they stand, that, Lord, it's you that opens the doors. Lord, it's you that makes the way. Lord, it's you that brings blessing into their lives. And, Father, may they recognize, even in the small things, that, Lord, you have touched their lives. And they are blessed. They are chosen. They are yours, O oh God. Bless them and favor them, we pray, in Jesus' precious name. And all God's people said, amen. Isn't God good? Amen. We usually talk about giving people 10 hugs. I want you to give people 10 encouragements before you leave. Amen. Say that shirt looks good. That coat looks good. Your hair looks good. You've lost a lot of weight. That looks good. Share 10 encouragements. Encourage one another. 
Go in the power of our Lord and Savior. May His grace be with you. Amen.